So I'm here in the town of Gorokalvalia. Gorokalvalia is a town about 40 kilometers south of uh, Warsaw, a, a town with a very rich and important Jewish history. Gorokalvalia was the place of the Gera Hasidim, a very well-known Hasidic group that still lives today. Uh, and we received a call from a, a, a lovely uh, elderly lady here in the town um, who told us that they're building this new road. In fact, if we spin the camera around, you can see a part of this new road that they're building a new highway through the city. And they reached out to us and they told us um, that what they found in the past road and previously was that some of these area and some of the, the pavements or even the road uh, was built during the time of the German Nazi occupation here and built using Jewish tombstones. I wasn't quite sure. I had a flight back to Israel today. I extended my flight to be here and what we can actually see is really quite incredible and quite disturbing and, and painful to see as well. But this is just a little bit of what we were able to take out so far. And you can see here clearly uh, tombstones, even broken, that I don't know when or how, but maybe just now. But here we can see four tombstones. The full matzevot, full matzevas of people. You can see the names. This is Schwaltz, the family name, an elderly lady. You can see that the care that somebody would have put in like a gold yellow color. Here we can see another full entire tombstone, an entire matzeva that was also put in the name. I'll be able to read it and decipher it a little bit later, but you can see the incredible work and detail that's gone into this and other parts that were sadly broken with years. And this is a Matsava that's also unfortunately only the bottom, but fascinating in terms of the different colors that you could see. This would have been the bottom part that would have been held in the ground. Above there's a green color, a black, a red, with what would be gold lettering. And really this is just, the start of it. If we look, uh, and this really is particularly interesting because this would have been, as I said before. So we'll go and see that in a second. But one of the things that you can see here, if you look close, is underneath the road, we can see more fragments of Matsevas. Now, if I was just to scrape this out, and again, barely touch the surface, you're going to see tombstones literally used to pave the road. This really is quite shocking. Um, this is one of the most, uh, one of the craziest cases I've heard of, um, to see just so many. Uh, and really, we, literally, you can see that there's just a small area here that we've looked at. And this is what we found within sort of a few minutes. These were exposed previously. But if we dig further and look further, I'm almost certain that this entire area uh, will be full of, of these matzevot, of these tombstones. Again, fragments and pieces and really this entire, entire, entire area. Uh, what we're going to do uh, as a foundation, as from the depths, is over the next few days, we'll reach out to the company who are building these roads uh, and hope, uh, in fact, we'll do more than hope. Uh, we'll do it my style, we'll demand from them that whilst building this road they take care of this heritage and this history because this isn't right this is a, a historical you know horrendous thing that desperately needs to be corrected today i'm going to attempt uh, to take these tombstones back to the cemetery i mean i'm not quite sure how i'll be able to lift this alone this uh, i mean this is going to be probably 150 kilos uh, yeah and these are just fragments. These are very, very heavy pieces of stones. So if I can't lift them today, then we'll come back with volunteers and bring more people to scour this area, to look through where we are right now, to make sure that we bring these back and take them back to the Jewish cemetery where they rightfully belong. What we'll do is we'll take full proper pictures and documentation of every single one that we're taking back. So if you have family or know of people from Gora Kalavalia, from Gora, share this with them. Um, and maybe we'll be able to locate the Matsiva, the tombstone of a loved one. So from the middle of nowhere, about two kilometers away from the Jewish cemetery of Gora Kalvaria, which is also crazy to think that somebody really had the want and the need to do 
such a horrendous thing. You can also see, which is interesting, is the uniformity of the size. So the reason also why, even here, the colours of this tombstone will be somewhat protected would be because the tombstone was taken, it would be cut in half, as you can see, and they're all roughly the same size. So they would have been taken, flipped around face down so people didn't know what it was, and used to pave these streets. And sometimes we get the full top of a matziva, of a tombstone where we can see everything that's written. Other times it'll be the bottom, the other end will be where there's nothing written at all. We're going to follow this wonderful lady and see where... Tam jest matywa? Tak. Jeszcze jedno? Tylko nie wiem, czy jest y, to jest z napisem, czy bez, bo jeszcze nie... Nie odwrócona. Okay. Ja mam jeszcze jedną, tam dalej na przyczelniku, z napisami. Tak jak fotografowałam, tak. już byłam. Zaraz pokażę. O! Tu taki kawałek tej. Mhm. Ale to jest chyba... Tak, to jest taki. Tak, nie, nie. To jest chyba po, po te, te, co było i dopiero na to tak. tak, tak. A tu jest napisami jest o. A gdzie jest? To jest tam yy, za tym zjechaniem, ale jak możemy dojść albo możemy podjechać i by pan zobaczył, że stamtąd by można było zabrać tam. To jest dalej? No taki kawałek jest po tym za. Ok. Dziękuję pani. Ja tak sobie myślę, że tu to mogą być jeszcze, bo te, bo te tak, jak tak. mi rodzice opowiadają, to te baraki były tu wszędzie. Oczy, oczywiście jest jeszcze, tak. No. The lady saying that there's most likely more, much of all, more tombstones in this area. Uh, and, you know, to me it's pretty obvious that that would be the case. You can also see quite how difficult this is to get around here. This is really heavy sand. And so I'm not quite sure how we're going to be able to carry all of these out when we finish, uh, but we'll figure it out. Maybe we'll rent some RTVs for the day and come in and pull these out and take them back to the Jewish cemetery. I'm not sure, but if there's something we'll be able to do is to get it done. So now we're following the lady to other areas. <laughs> Zgłaszałam to do takich, mm -hmm. co, op, co opiekują się cmentarzem. Mm -hmm. I tam w tamtym roku opisałam, sfotografowałam. No mieli przyjechać, ale tak, dzisiaj mówię, pójdę, zobaczę. Mm -hmm. No nadal jest. Dziękuję. Ja wczoraj zobaczyłam to do syna, wysłałam. Mówię, szukaj, mówię, innych mówię sposobów. Bo mówię, przyjdą złodzieje i to będą potem handlować explaining that people have taken these that people could take these if we're not careful and sell them and use them I don't think that's the case I hope that she's wrong and people wouldn't do such a thing but really it shows the urgency of dealing with something like this and doing it as quick as possible to make sure that this doesn't get lost or repurposed or hidden for whatever reason well, I'm glad that we're here today. So from what I'm aware that this area was actually 
if I remember the geography of this ground correctly, this area was used quite heavily by the military during the war, uh, used by the Germans as a site for training, which is why they would have taken so many of these fragments of Matsevas and used them to flatten and resurface and work. You can see there's a shooting range today it looks like. found this whole site when she was out walking her dog and this is when she reached out to numerous organizations and institutions and it's difficult to know what to do with this and this is when we reach back to it. Oh here we go. happened here. As I previously mentioned, we're in Gora Kalvalia, where Hasidei Gor, where the Gora Hasidim came from, and you know, a place only an hour drive literally from Warsaw, and seeing these remnants of Jewish heritage and history just scattered uh, is, is difficult and not easy, and we're incredibly grateful to this kind lady, Jinkuya Balzol Fani, because without the help of, of Jink, Jinkuya Balzol, because without the help of, of incredible people like this kind lady, we wouldn't receive any of this information. And really when, you know, this is down to the media that we do and the journalists who are watching this and tell this story, thank you. Because it's through stories like these that we're able to find more and discover more and take these parts of this heritage and this history back to where they rightfully deserve to be. Uh, so from here in Gura Kalvalia, uh, an hour south of Warsaw, only about 40 kilometers away. I bid you all farewell and we'll make sure that we continue this journey and we make sure that you'll be able to continue this journey with us and watch as we take these parts back. And for those of you who are bigger and stronger than me, feel free to message me, um, volunteer, help us. This is gonna be a big, heavy schlep, uh, a lot of weight taking these back to the cemetery. So from taking these back to the Jewish cemetery. So thank you all again. Thank you for watching and thank you for being part of this.